Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm Jason Weil. It is September 25th, 2024. This is the Jupiter Weekly Front Ends meeting. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we have kind of a light turnout today because of Pi Data Paris is starting today. Um, but we do have stuff on the agenda, so I'll drop a link into the chat one more time. If you're on the call, feel free to sign in, add anything you want to talk about to the agenda. Um, Jeremy is not attending this meeting, but he added an item to the agenda that we can talk about. I'll read it out for the sake of the recording. Um, he wanted to talk about uh, updates on work in progress pull requests. So there's um, allowing customizing the service manager with plugins, which is pull request 16794. Um, it needs a uh, pull request, it depends on pull request 16804 update to the latest Lumino, which is ready for review. So might need to take a look at PR 16804. Um, this can be used to register the Y drive as the default drive, and it likely fixes issues related to the RTC prefix. Um, that's uh, Jupyter Collaboration Pull Request 365. That's a draft PR. Um, so I'm not sure what the status of that is going to be anytime soon. Um, I'm going to write that down for my own notes. Let's see. Um, Allows many more use cases, can be an alternative to pull request 16744 in JupyterLab as extensions would now be able to provide their own contents manager via an extension. Uh, some details still to be fixed and polished, but could be ready, quote, soon. Um, any comments, questions about that? I'm not too uh, familiar with these personally, but for the sake of the recording, does anyone have any questions or comments about these? Okay. Uh, raise my hand, but that's uh, just the one that I raised last time where anytime that we add something where you can replace the existing content manager or whatever it is with your own, that means you can never replace it with two. You can never, uh, sorry, Nick, Nick, your microphone is not sounding great. Um, great. Let, me get a, let me get some cans. Okay. Sorry, I missed, I missed the end of that sentence. I heard too much static and not enough. How's this better? Anything? Try it. Yeah, try it again. Um, why don't you repeat what you were going to say before? I'm going to read. I'll rejoin. Okay. Um, yeah, the RTC prefix stuff, I've been talking to some of my colleagues about. They're particularly interested in having that um, like, removed or fixed up. Oh, Nick, I can hear you much, much clearer now. Good, yeah, so I can't. Um, yeah, so anytime that we, anytime that we take something that's currently a singleton, even if it's hard to get to, and we replace it with a configurable singleton that some extension can replace, that means that you can never install two extensions that both accept, expect to be able to replace that singleton. Uh, so, you know, anytime that we're making a big breaking design change, which this is, this, I mean, it's theoretically breaking because there's no way that your extension would work in an older Jupyter lab, yada, yada. Um, we need to think about how to make those places composable so that you can add more than one. This is going to solve a specific case for a specific use case for a specific deployment, but it's not going to drive anything forward in making stuff more configurable. I would rather have one breaking change that fixes it properly, if at all, uh, versus having multiple breaking changes in serial. Okay. Is um, the other pull request that we discussed, I think two weeks ago, uh, which uses a concept of a provider, content provider, more composable, I guess so, because it allows you yeah. to- Yeah, you don't even have to write TypeScript. Right. Yeah. You don't even have to write TypeScript if you don't do it. The nothing changes on the public API. Um, you're just asking for it. No, it would change. You would need to say, I want to open it like this. I want to open it with this thing. And you'd have to advertise that and you'd have to internationalize that and make that ARIA accessible and all that good stuff. But 
it would be one way to add an infinite number of use cases, including use cases that didn't require TypeScript, which, you know, anytime that we can go back and say, oh shit, we got three implementations of Jupyter Contents, right? That I know of offhand. Uh, you know, there's the fully bespoke one for Jupyverse. There's the Jupyter Server one. There's the Jupyter Lite one. Those are the only ones I know about. You know, it's the only ones I'm concerned about at this particular moment. They all conform to some kind of schema. And if all you have to do as a server extension is implement that schema, which might mean being able to directly reuse all of the handlers and replace the get method and the post method, that is an enormous win. Um, you know, you can put whatever you need to back there without bothering at all on the TypeScript side and suddenly every extension works if your server extension is there. They're just all become aware of, of... I mean, there's some more stuff because, you know, that's like predicated on, on model type, which is this intentionally data poor representation of just file or directory or JSON or notebook, I think, or maybe, maybe I'm getting those mixed up. Um, actually, no, I think the model type is just JSON or file or directory. Anyhow, uh, that might need to be augmented with more stuff of like, you're going to get this back and it's this MIME type because we don't want an unlimited number of model types. You know, like if you're going to get JSON, that's cool. Now it's JSON, right? It has, you know, line endings don't matter. If you feed that into an LSP, you won't know what the hell you're talking about. Like all that stuff, you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes with the JSON model, whatever it's convenient, but that's about it. Um, but that's what most people are going to want to put stuff on because they want to get it on collaboration or whatever. So, you know, that might be the breaking change that's going to tell you here's what the mind, well, the mind type's already in there, right? Uh, let's look at Jupyter server YAML. It's the only file. It's the only YAML file in that whole, oh no, that's not true. There's the GitLab stuff. But it's weird that it's the, it's a runtime thing that we serve as YAML. All right, let's see your MIME type. If the type is file, then this will be null. What? Oh, this is the stupid hash. No, it's not. No, it's not. A contents object. The content and format keys may be null if content is not contained. Okay, we knew that. And you got to handle that, right? So like, what do you, what does it, what does a client, what does a contents provider say if it's asking for type JSON? Does it have a size? You know, does it have a last modified? It might not be any of those things. So you have to make those up. Then the MIME type will be null. If the type is filed, then the MIME type will be null. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, not really, but it's awkward. Can you link to... Um... Sorry, yeah, let me, uh, it is this here, JSON schema in the thing, dinger, chat in the chat, chat, chat. Because at least on the front end in JupyterLab uh, types, I think we don't have MIME type. Included no, you do. Responses. A absolutely. No, no, they know how to do that because that's what drives the whole damn rest of the system. I mean, like, that just might be wrong, you know. I don't oh, have. No. Okay, so so it is in the content response. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So w w w what I was thinking is, when we are prior to calling the API, we might want to decide to which content provider should we send the request based on MIME type, and yeah. at that point we only have that type, which is this directory file notebook, and format, which is text-based 64 JSON. And that's right. what lives uh, uh, in the front end prior to making the request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the, the only issue, I mean, the, an issue I take with this is we already have an open with, right? Yeah. Uh, and that expects, uh, I, I think it has to be collapsed with that, like there's no you know, it'd be like, maybe it would end up being, I mean, one, it need, it would, if we do this, it would need to get out of the context menu because no one can find things in context menus. 
Okay. Um, so, so I actually, I actually went through that rapid hole of, uh, can we connect the content provider implementation to open with? Uh, and I've linked uh, the part of the discussion on the content provider PR, but it will probably not open correctly when you click on it because it's GitHub. Right. Problem with, with that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, and and part of that is, okay, if if we want to make open with manage which content provider to use, then we probably would want to remove the pattern, like regular expression pattern matching. Yeah, I mean, the, I'm not saying that's just an implementation detail. I'm saying from a UI perspective, there should be no difference between, like right now, the, the best example we have is open notebook. If you double click a notebook, it opens it with notebook. If you open with JSON, then it opens as a JSON thing. If you open as a text file, you can see it as a text file. None of those three models are in sync at all but we accept that, right? Yep. So if you make a change to one, then it doesn't change anywhere else. And, you know, depending on how much I drive kind of shenanigans we'd want to put into the, it would make sense to put into your thing. Like you could make a backend REST-based contents provider that answered the call of this and was evented by making your own custom WebSocket. And you, you know, you could know how to do that or you could do slow poll or you could do, service and events or, you know, any of that nonsense, right? But just concentrating on the baseline stuff, right? Like get, list, well, first it's list. It always lists first, then it does get, and then it, has, then it could be able to do put. But I think it's reasonable to say that you can't always put, you know? Yeah. So there's a bit of that open API, like what are the allowed verbs in it all up in there? Um, but yeah, from a UI perspective, that would have to get so much more clear. Uh, and I and I don't think that can stay, you know. Like if important stuff is going to use this, then that would have to move out of out of the context menu somehow. Um, but that that menu bar is already getting real bad in the in the file browser on on lab. So I don't know. Yeah, well, the, it, it's also customizable in the settings. Um, I, I I like. At, at this time, we have to release 4.3 or decide which implementation, uh, like content provider versus customizable services, we want to go with to address to address the RTC prefix issue. And on the content provider side, you say it's it's more composable, and we could use that for open wave to have custom widgets which communicate using a different wire or only request, that that's my words now, only request a very specific subset of the file. So like you streaming contents so that you can actually open one billion uh, rows CSV rather than just having a widget which could display that if there was someone willing to, pro, uh, like widgets can handle that but they don't have a data source that provides it. Yeah. So I, 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 I think my takeaway from this meeting is I, I will tag you on the discussion. Yeah, um, I might anyway. reply. I don't know. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> and if you, have, if you have thoughts on that, I, I, I truly appreciate them. Well, uh, I mean, I, I laid it out on, on there of like the, the, a specific concrete use case that I've actually implemented before is PDF. Oh, I, 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 I mean, do you mean the uh, regex and JSON comments? Uh, I, was just, I was just putting forth like, if you were to want to ship an ability to open something with existing tools that you didn't have to write new tools for, Right, so if I wanted to open an image as JSON, I could run that through a dissector and view it as a JSON model instead of viewing it as an image. Dope, that's great. Why rewrite the JSON viewer? Maybe I swap out the JSON viewer for a better JSON viewer and now I can view that JSON. That's super reasonable, right? Like that's not, not even crazy. Um, PDF contents, I got stuff inside of a PDF and I wanna just view it like a folder because there's a folder in there, there's, there's attachment. So, that's my use case that I think would provide a lot of power 
and move a lot of the complexity from the, the TypeScript side to a server side until you're in Jupyter Light, and then it's all the same crap anyway, and you'd have to do it anyway. But but we know what that means. You know, we know that that's painful to to re-implement things that that look like it. But if it's reusing contents, re, re, if that specific instance is reusing contents reply with its you know other representation over on the TypeScript side, you, you know we you don't have to worry about what Jupyter Server moves slower than Jupyter Lab does. So it's a more stable target to be able to write things toward, and then it's going to be more broadly compatible. Um, so, yeah, but I don't know, you know, okay, so now I've got this nightmare horror show of, I want to open a file inside of a, inside of a writable PDF and collaborate on it. Right? Like, is that even a thing? You know, is that, is that a use case we're trying to, are they, are these things then chainable? Um, you know, can I, I open that image as a JSON model that I can then write JSON back into and have it do something, whatever the hell that would, you know, I'm going to change my palette. I'm going to make it a black and white picture, you know, um, and then can I collaborate on that and will everybody be notified? And if I change it to black and white, will the image show up as black and white immediately? Because those are two different models now that are not of the same type, so they're probably not in the same. Um, so yeah, I would, just, I would just caution, you know, whatever we did to break RTC, it, no one noticed really because it's an extension now. Unbreaking RTC is good, and unbreaking JupyterLab GitHub is good. So I kind of just want it fixed, but if it fixes it by JupyterLab GitHub has to drop its own thing in or something, you know, like would RTC work next to JupyterLab GitHub now or would they fight? You know, I, that, that's what I'm not sure about replacing the whole contents manager. Um, so, so the swappable services parts, right? Yeah, if you swap a service, you know, only but yeah. if that you go to the swap meet, only one person gets to buy your shiny toaster, you know, like that's it. Okay. There's, you only get one toaster. So, so, so there are like um, two things. As a solution to the RTC problem, you would say it's, it's, it's only partial solution because then it's not composable. We, with content providers, to be honest, there is still kind of a problem there because I, I think I wrote it down in a comment. You would need to do your extension if if it wanted to customize um, which kind of a, like you might need to have two different custom providers, one for the REST API, one for the RTC still, because if collaboration is disabled, then you wouldn't want to have collaborative access. I, I'm not 100% yeah, sure. I don't know. Like yeah. So so doing something that only fixes RTC is just going to create this other problem down the road. But it would be at least fixed. And then maybe more people would be able to use it without it breaking all their other extensions. But then again, maybe not. Yeah. So. But, but then uh, the, the service provider, sorry, the services swapping would probably ease maintenance of light. Do I get this correctly? Don't don't worry too much about light. We'll deal with whatever you know, whatever comes down the pipe. We already had to jettison a bunch of stuff that was broken because of this bug. So we're happy to un in because there's still no RTC thing that works in light now against why whatever we've got now. Um, with the public signaling servers and all that. I mean, that was a magnificent time when Jupyter Light collaboration just worked. It was sick. You know, did it with 100 people in a room, and it was fine. Um, but the, uh, you know, we, we had to get rid of that, clearly. Um, and then we had to get rid of Jupyter Lab GitHub, which kind of worked, but then you couldn't make new files. So we're like, well, that's not useful, so we're getting rid of that. So anything that let us bring back one of those would be worth it to me, uh, would be worth the development effort to make that work. You know, even at a, like we might have to do some shimming 
right? We're used to that. Um, and we might make that an extra package if it takes a lot of shimming rather than putting it in. I mean, we wouldn't put anything in core that would only work with RTC because there's nothing that works with RTC in, in light today. We probably wouldn't put anything in JupyterLab GitHub unless it also unbroke other things, um, other iDrive implementations. But I don't know of a lot of them. So like maybe the file system contents is one. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember which ones use iDrive and which ones don't. And then the elephant of the room in this, of course, is that your kernels won't have any access to this stuff. So you write this, this you know, beautiful, magnificent thing. Your kernel is then working on a file that is not synced because it's not going through the RTC pipe. It's expecting to work on a file. And so now what, right? So it's like RTC is kind of good for notebooks. It's not really good for data today. Um, and if a kernel can't talk to it, then it's then it's just window dressing. So, yeah, a bunch of concerns there. All right. Um, looks like we had a couple more people join us during that discussion. So I'll drop another link to the. Um, Doc to the uh, agenda in here. Um, so thank you so much for that discussion. Um, I did want to talk about the Lab 4.3.0 release because I was taking a look at the open issues. It looks like there are five open issues. Um, well, one of which is just a release plan, um, but three of them are tagged as uh, release blockers, including one that Mike just opened earlier today. Um, so one of them, the file browser column stuff, I have an open pull request out, although there are some open issues about it. Um, and then the other two do not have a linked pull request. Um, it does look like, so there's upgrade to YDoc stable. Mike owns that. Um, making so the mini that, map configure, sorry, go ahead. Um, upgrade to YDoc stable. This is like a tiny release task. Okay. Really. So let, let's not worry about this. Okay. Um, making the minimap configurable and extensible, is that something that we want to keep for 4.3.0? Um, it seems more and more likely that we don't have to do that. Okay. Part, part of this is uh, there were concerns that maybe that could be potential performance impact of the minimap. And maybe we would want users to be able to opt out of and use the previous implementation from 4.2, which we eventually want to allow to extend it. But given so much testing, uh, the performance regressions are actually in very different components so far. Um, but I don't want to say categorically no yet because of the very release blocker that you mentioned that I opened today, which is that users actually cannot open some of the very big notebooks, so they weren't able to test the minimap and performance with like some of the larger notebooks. I will talk about it later. Okay. Um, and then, I think, sorry. Lost my place here. Um, the the release blocker um, that you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, are you able to? Okay, so oh, David, I'm look. I, I just opened it. Um, you see, you pinged David Brochard, who said that this is due to the inefficient stream processing that was introduced in sixteen four ninety eight. Um, should David own this issue or should we just keep it open and kind of let this play out? So, um, I, I, I think that's a declaration from David that he will try to look into that. I will try yeah. to look into that as well. Okay. Uh, or probably I, I, I will review David's PR as soon as he opens one or I will try to open one myself. Uh, it's basically collaborative efforts. We are in, in it 
uh, all of us <laughs> at this point. Okay. It's it, it, it's fixing, like the underlying PR is there because in RTC, uh, large files, large notebooks were a problem when you iterated on stream. Mm -hmm. And that was reported across different uh, user bases. And it turns out that this fix is unfortunately uh, introducing a another significant performance regression. So we might might want to explore a couple of ways to address this or mitigate. I don't know yet. It's a fresh issue, <laughs> three hours old. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also saw that you listed a couple of uh, agenda items of your own about uh, pull requests and an issue. Did you want to talk about those? Yeah, very quickly. I, I think we, we talked about the release blocker issue. So it's basically very slow to open notebooks on 4.3 beta 0 and beta 1. And by very slow, like if your notebook is long enough, it will not open uh, ever. Um, the other thing that I, I, I wanted to link, yeah, I'll drop in the chat in case if anyone has time, is a pull request which fixes overwriting shortcuts and actually probably removing shortcuts as well. That's ready for review again. If anyone has time, um, I'd appreciate a review on this one. That's all from me. Okay. Um, and then Rocio added an item, uh, yeah, and, and then she joined in. Um, so Rocio, did you want to, uh, are you ready to talk about your agenda item? Uh, yeah, so I think I posted that in case I didn't make it to the meeting. I, uh, I tried releasing, um, NB Classic, uh, some time ago, uh, and I experienced some issues with, uh, I think that the, the draft release was it tagged uh and I couldn't follow through with the release. Uh then I faced some other other um couple of issues and it what I ended up doing is I, I had a previous fork that was not up to date with the latest Jupyter release here. So I, I did go ahead and, and update to uh, the current version that's available and um the checks for, for admin privileges are not no longer passing. So uh, I was wondering if there was someone here that could uh, uh, help me with that, uh, either grant, granting me admin privileges or, or uh, anything else that might help so that I can uh, try releasing MB Classic once more. Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I just dropped into the chat a list of the owners in the Jupyter org. I am not an owner. Um, and I don't think anybody on this call is an owner, um, but Anna, who is part of the 10 o'clock Pacific meeting for DEI, is an owner, so I could ask her. Um, oh. And if, if she's not, then I can ask Brian, who's my manager, um, who I should be able to contact pretty easily. So strictly, this doesn't have to be an owner of the organization. It just okay. needs to have uh, a person needs to have admin privileges on NB Classic to configure mm -hmm. secrets. See, I I am so unprivileged. I don't even I can't even see a list of people who have that permission. Oh no, I cannot either. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know um, who 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 has that uh, that right. It's um. So I I, I think I I don't know Rosie if you had a chance to configure the new releaser. Uh, with the um, new mechanism, trusted publishers before, or I haven't done that yet. Um, before is that something? Is that the way that I was usually re uh, just releasing from my from the fork? And yeah. um... so, so this is a, like three to four step process. You need to okay. log in into PyPI, uh, Py okay. and there you need to have permissions to modify uh, and be classic to add the workflow and I can help you with that part okay. but then you need to uh, set some other secrets on the repository in mm -hmm. uh, environment uh, 
dedicated to this environment. And for that, I cannot help you. And you need to contact someone. But this these things can be done independently. So after this call, I will log in to see if if I can enable and be classic uh, to be. Yeah, actually, I I might not be able because it's in Jupiter Org, not Jupiter Lab Org. Mm -hmm. Which, which I I think it doesn't make that much sense from the government's perspective. Yeah, be because it, it, like it's Jupiter front ends, so mm -hmm. re releasers maybe should be able to to configure releases, or uh, maybe we should merge. It's like. But then migrating this, okay. So so maybe maybe this is a different task uh, yeah. from people with higher admin rights to make sure that Notebook and NB Classic are under the Jupyter Lab team, and maybe we want to rename the Jupyter Lab to Jupyter Frontends team on PyPy. Oh shit. Maybe I something I can bring up. Um, maybe would this be maybe a topic for like uh, one of the uh, governance meetings or? Yeah, I I, I guess I, I I would just open an issue on the governance team compass to mention okay. that there is this roadblock and that will probably be faster than waiting mm -hmm. uh, for a synchronous meeting. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Okay. I, I will I will likely open an issue and in, in the meantime I will get started on on um looking into adding a trusted publisher, uh the process for that as well. Oh, thank you both. Okay. So that's the end of our agenda. As I see it, does anybody else have anything they want to discuss on the record? All right. Well, I hope all of our friends had fun at uh, or are having fun at Pi Data Paris um, and they enjoy this recording. So I will stop the recording and we'll see you next time.